In this video, we would be talking about alkenes and alkynes. So, previously, um, you should have uh, already watched the review on alkenes. And after that, you should proceed at this video. And basically, both of these can be called unsaturated hydrocarbons. Although, there is another class of unsaturated hydrocarbons which uh, is known as the aromatic hydrocarbons. We will talk about the special class later on. So we discuss this uh, almost simultaneously because they have the similar um, properties and the similar types of reactions. And so just to start off, let's just recall that alkenes are hydrocarbons with at least one double bond and alkynes hydrocarbons with at least one triple bond. And so I think it would be nice if we would start uh, drawing an example. This is the simplest alkene possible. This is ethene. And uh, the simplest alkyne is ethyne. All right. And uh, we see here a double bond. And in a double bond, we know we have one sigma and one pi. Here we have one sigma and uh, two more pi bonds. All right. Now, if we look at the carbon here for ethene, all right, it has one pi bond. So we should assume that this is sp2 hybridized both carbons. All right. And uh, for this, both carbons have two pi bonds each. They should be sp hybridized. And if we talk about their geometry, if we have sp2, it should be planar. If we have sp, it should have a linear geometry. All right. Now, uh, let's recall some of the properties that they should have. Just like with alkenes, they should be nonpolar because, again, we only have carbon to carbon or carbon to hydrogen bonds in their structures. Their difference, their main difference with alkenes is that they are reactive. Remember, what's present in these two is absent in alkanes, and that is the presence of pi bonds. These pi bonds are responsible for giving reactivity to this. Why? Because again, pi bonds are weaker, easier to break. So if, for example, a nucleophile or electrophile, in their case, if, for example, an electrophile attacks them, it would be easy because all the electrophile has to do is to break the pi bond. Alright, and uh, regarding their isomerism, we know that they, are, they, they have geometric isomers, the cis-trans isomers, and between the cis and the trans isomer of a certain alkene, we should know that the trans is more stable simply because their bulkier or heavier groups are far away from each other. Uh, let's just try to give an example so we could remember. So, for example, we compare uh, this. This is the cis isomer because it's on the same side. And uh, this is the trans isomer. Since in uh, the trans isomer, which is this one, the two chlorines are far from each other, this is more stable because they will repel. If in case these groups are like bulky groups such as uh, long alkene chains, they're still far away from each other. So still, that's, uh, that makes it more favorable to them. They become more stable if they are separated uh, more farther or farther from each other. All right. Now, after this, um, we, we, we would uh, like to tell you that there could actually be a combination of an alkene and, al and an alkyne. For example, a hydrocarbon has both a triple bond and a double bond, for example. And let's just try to fill uh, this up with H's. H, H. Yeah, something like that. If in case there's a presence of a double and a triple bond in the same molecule, we could uh, just combine, you know, combine their suffixes this is e n and this is y n so we could call this an e9 e9 all right so after that 
there are some times uh, where in, uh, in classes you are given a certain molecular formula and you are asked does this have double bonds, triple bonds, does this form a ring and uh, how are we supposed to know that? Well, the first thing we have to know is the term that would uh, help us in knowing that. So this is actually the term of uh, IHD, or the index of hydrogen deficiency. Why deficiency of hydrogen? Remember the term saturation has a relation with the number of hydrogens. Remember, because for example, I compare ethane with ethene. Obviously, this one, ethene, has less hydrogens. Why? Because these carbons spent their electrons bonding, forming an additional pi bond instead of using those electrons to bond to more hydrogens. So since it, it, it's not uh, fully uh, optimized with the maximum number of hydrogens, it's not saturated. So we call this unsaturated. So we, that means that if we have some kind of hydrogen deficiency, then most likely there should be a presence of something like a pi bond. But remember, for example, let's try to, um, let's try to recall the general formula for alkanes. Alkanes have the general formula Cn H 2n plus 2. Alright? So for example, we have C4, then 2n is 4 times 2, which is 8, then plus 2 is H10. This is the formula for butane. But if we make a ring, and this is cyclobutane, let's try to count the number of H's. Each carbon here should have two hydrogens to complete the four bonds per carbon. How many hydrogens do we have? C, 4, H. We, have, we only have eight. So here we can see that in every ring form, for every ring, you have an, an, a deficiency of two hydrogens. For every pi bond, also, look, we have six hydrogens here. How many do we have here? Four. So meaning, for every pi bond, we also lose two hydrogens. Alright? So that's the general principle of IHD. Now, let's try to have an example of IHD. Alright? For example, we are given the molecular formula C6H6. First thing we have... Um, First thing we have to do. Sometimes they will give you the. Uh, sometimes they'll give you a, a more complex example. The first thing you have to do is to know the molecular formula. For, uh, in this case, it's already given. Then the second thing you have to do is to get this as n and uh, calculate the formula of the linear alkene with this number of carbons. So again. A linear alkane should have Cn, H2, N plus 2. Since N here is 6, C6, then 6 times 2 plus 2 is 14. This is now the formula for the linear alkane. For the linear alkane, and this is the given. What we're going to do, the next step, so this is like step 1, step 2. The next step would be, you would... Uh, subtract the number of hydrogens from the given to the number of hydrogens in the linear. So if we have here 14 and we have 6, we get the difference. This is 8. Alright. So here we have 8. This is actually the deficiency in hydrogens. Alright. And uh, usually what people do is they divide this further into 2 to give a certain uh, uh, product which is 4, meaning uh, one point here out of 4 would mean that either one point, you could spend one point, it's, it's as if you're in an arcade and you have four coins. Now, each of your coins would resemble either a pi bond or a ring closure. Alright, 